I'm so glad to see all of you all here today and then those of you that are online with us. Um, I'm so excited about what God is doing. I, I, I keep telling uh, Marquita that uh, there's an excitement on the inside. I mean, you can't look on the outside and tell just in the natural, um, not that things are happening, but in my heart, I believe big things are happening. Yeah. Amen. I got one yes, and that's from the platform. I'll take it. I'll take it. In 2 Samuel, uh, I want to start a, a new thought uh, for the next couple of weeks, and it's taken from this one verse of Scripture. In chapter 7 and verse 10, it says, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own. And move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more as previously. I want to talk to you uh, about a place of your own. This is God's will. It is undoubtedly God's will for you and I to dwell, as the scripture says, this was God talking to Samuel about the children of God in that day, Israel. We believe that if you are born again, you belong to God just as much as one born a Jew. And as God said to the man of God, the prophet in that day, I believe he's saying to faith family, for anyone that would receive it, he's saying, it is my heart's desire to take you and appoint a place for you and to plant you in that place that you may dwell in a place of your own and move no more, praise God. This is God's will for your life. God wants you to have a place of your own so that you don't have to move around from one place to another. God also, I like to say it this way, God wants you to have a place that you own. Uh, obviously, this is ministering to everybody, whether you live in a, a nice apartment or if you have a beautiful estate. God wants you to dwell in a place that you own. In America, debt has become a part of our society. It's just for many, many Americans, it's the way of life. But I believe that God wants you to live debt free. I believe he wants you to own your own home, own your vehicles outright, own your furniture, be able to pay cash for everything you do. I believe that with all of my heart, not just that he wants you to have a place of your own, but a place that you own free and clear. God, say it out loud. God wants me to live debt free. In the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 18, it says to owe no man anything but to love him. And that he that loveth uh, and, and he that loveth one another hath fulfilled the law. Amen. And so God wants you to live debt free. But the reality is it's a way of life. It's the way people do life. And, and so our believing gets cut short for that that exists in everyday life then for us as a congregation God wants us to have a place of our own can I at least get a couple more amens on that note so that we don't have to move no more from one place to the next and so when when this scripture was exposed to my heart uh, we just latched on to it uh, and we believe it we we've Oh, we have sown seed towards uh, having our own building, and we believe on that day that we broke ground by planting that seed that the manifestation is just around the corner. We believe we received it already, glory to God. We count it already done, and any day now we'll, we'll be making an announcement of our new location, so please, as I have said, stay tuned. Amen? So last week we talked about faith without works is dead. We shared that faith begins the moment you discover God's will for your life. At that point, faith begins. 
So hearing that God wants you to have a place of your own, you should have faith. You should be firmly persuaded that God wants me to have a place of my own. At that moment, faith begins. But we learn very clearly that faith without works is dead. You can say all day, I believe God wants me to have a place. I believe we've got our church building. I believe for this new, I believe for that. But as James said, if you have faith and don't have works, I'll show you my faith by my works. And then he concluded that, that by saying, faith without works is dead. Um, go with me, if you would, to the book of Proverbs chapter 24. So faith without works is dead. We believe that it's already done. Everything that God has given to us, it is a settled fact. It is already done. We believe that it's already done. But what are the works that accompany our faith? I want you to notice Proverbs 24 and verse number 27 in the message translation. It says this, first plant your fields, then build your barn. Say that out loud with me. First plant your fields, then build your barn. So what, what are the works associated with our faith as it relates to our building? Well, we are doing exactly what the scripture says. The Bible teaches us to first plant your field and then build your barn. Uh, I like how it says in the New King James Version, it says, prepare your outside work, make it fit for yourself in the field, and afterward build your house. The Amplified says, put first thing first. Say that out loud, put first things first. Put first things first, prepare your work outside, get it ready for yourself in the field, and afterward build your house and establish a home. In the Living Bible, it says, develop your business first before building your house. Our faith as a congregation is being expressed through our seed. I could have announced in December of last year that we're starting a building fund and we're believing God for our own building. And so if you would like to give towards it, it'll cost X amount of millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars for us to take that first step. And we could have came to you with a capital campaign like they do in so many churches. But what we believe is what the word says is put first things first. I like, again, how it says in the message translation, first sow your field, plant your field, get the seed in the ground first, and then afterward set up a barn where you can begin saving for that which you desire. Thank God for his plan 